faltan los intérpretes. Okay. On, the, on the World Water Week, and uh, Adrian, uh, the floor is yours. You will present your panelists, and please go ahead. Thank you. Perfect. So thank you very much, and welcome everybody to this site event about the 2014 World Water Week. First of all, my name is Ejon Pucharnau, and I am a program manager at the Stockholm International Water Institute, working with the World Water Week. First of all, I would like to thank Josefina and her team on behalf of CIWI for allowing us to, to be here and basically introduce you a bit of the, of the World Water Week. And as you might all know, the, the World Water Week in Stockholm has been the annual focal point on for the globe's water-related issues since 1991, gathering over 2,500 participants in Stockholm. Every year, the theme of the week changes, allowing us to, to have a discussion <coughs> from a different angle. But before we go into the 2014 topic, I would like to, to start giving a small recap of the 2013 World Water Week. Last year, following the Again, the year of, uh, of water cooperation, we focus on, on water cooperation and building partnerships. And we had counting seminars, workshops, and site events, over 110 events organized by over 2,070 organizations. Aside of those events, we had over 80 closed meetings held in Stockholm during the week. And we had 2,600 participants who were represent, representing 110 countries. I would like to highlight that out of these 2,600 participants, around 25% of them were young professionals, so people under 35 years of age, which we find very important because we see the continuity with the new generation coming to the week. We also held a Young Professional Day, and for that day we had 120 people registered. As you can see from this graph, the the representatives from the participants or the organizations represented at the week is quite broad. We have scientific background, we have government agencies, intergovernmental organizations, civil society, and private sector. So it, the, the week has a broad spectrum of, of organizations coming together. We had over around 110 journalists coming to the week, and there were articles published in over 80 countries. This also adding up to the television and radio newsletters. Here are some of the examples of the newsletters that, uh, that cover the week, and we have uh, some of them <coughs> are the, the Guardian, Bloomberg, um, the Washington Post, or IPS. And when we talk about uh, radio and television, I think we need to highlight ARD, RTVE, which is the Spanish National Radio, Radio and Television Agency, or Al Jazeera. I think 2013, if we look at it from a social media perspective and web broadcasting, it's the year that the week became viral. We had over 53,000 people watching the, the week from, from our live stream broadcast. Out of these, we had 7,400, around 7,500, which were online viewers, and we had over 46,000 that were viewing the events on demand. There were 13 events live stream, and that makes an average of 572 two events viewers per event, and around 3,500 on-demand uh, viewers per each event. <coughs> During the seven days of the, of the week, we had 15,000, tweets using the official web uh, hashtag of the week, WWWeek. Th that makes around three th 316 tweets per hour. And we had 97,000, uh, over 97,000 share comments and likes of posts that were made on Facebook. So in that aspect, we really see it very important because the participation of the week or the message of the week doesn't stay at the Stockholm venue. It goes far beyond. So we could see that it's over 53,000 53, 53, participants that are coming to the week. 
with this in mind, we would like to thank everybody who's helped us to put the week together. As you might know, the, the CWE, Stockholm International Water Institute, provides the platform for, for the week to happen, but it's organizations like yours that provide us with the content to bring the discussion further. So we would like to, to thank everybody who's put an event together, everybody who's been attending at the week, but also those who watch the events or tweet it about the week. And that makes us move to 2014 and the topic of next year's week. And as, and as you might have guessed, the topic is water and energy. We will follow again the, the topic or the theme of the World Water Day. The key collaborating, key collaborating partners for this year is the World Bank, IUCN, and Sustainable Energy for All. That's why we have them here on the table. And I will give them the word a bit later for them to express their views on what do they expect from, from the week. As I said, the topic of the, of the week is energy and water. And as every year, the framework is set by the thematic scope. I'm sure that all of you have already read it, and even some of you know it by heart, so I will not really go much further into it. But for those of you that might not have such a good memory, I just would like to say that when addressing the energy and water theme, the World Water Week shall take an overall system view on how to develop and manage energy and water for, good, for the good of society and ecosystems at the local, at the national, regional, and global level, as well as avoiding misunderstanding unintended consequences of narrow sectorial approaches. So we really want to see the nexus going further, implementing it, and how to, how to do it. We don't want to keep on working on silos. The week will have eight workshops that are the, the backbone, or the scientific backbone of the conference, and they will cover issues such as uh, hydropower, uh, urban, uh, climate change, post-2015 agenda. If you are interested in, in these workshops, I would recommend for you to read again the the call for papers, you, you have it on your, on your table, so you could also download it from our website. And if you want to submit an abstract to any of these workshops, you have up to the 19th of January to, to submit it this Sunday. As I said before, the CWE provides a platform for, for discussion, and, but it's other organizations as well that are coming together to, to put the content together. So we welcome proposals for topics related to the broad spectrum of the water community to, to put, be put forward. But as this year's theme is water and energy, we're really interested in those topics that cover or expand on the thematic scope. This could be the economic incentive for water and energy, water and energy trade-off, water and policy and governance coordination, anything that would expand on, as I said before, on the framework of the week. When you submit a proposal, you would like to know what are we doing to, to review them. You would like to know the criteria that we're going to be using when, when we're selecting those that are going to be accepted. I think we, here you have them. We're going to be looking for multidisciplinary discussion and how the proposals integrate the different areas of expertise aiming to avoid trades off and promoting participation of non-water stakeholders. We're going to be looking for stakeholder diversity and how a proposal includes diverse interests and organizational types to encourage constructive debate between stakeholders. We're going to be looking on the development focus and if the proposal includes or integrates aspects of poverty reduction, of sustainable development, gender equality, integrity, and human rights. But also we're looking at the outputs and impacts of your, mes of your messages and what are you going to be discussing. If your pro proposal brings new thinking, new approaches of the topic, and obviously the format. We're really interested on new formats and ways of discussing. As well, the deadline for, for submissions is the 19th of January, this Sunday, so you still have a, a few days to, to submit, but I'm sure a few of you have already been discussing with your partners on what you want to put together. Next year, or this year's week, we'll have new elements. We're gonna be having some plenaries, some plenaries on Tuesday and Wednesday after lunch. So we're going to have a high-level um, speaker giving us a very inspirational um, session. 
we're going to be working to further our commitment towards our green meetings and try to make the week a paperless <coughs> conference. We, we, at the end of the, the week, we find that there's a lot of paper that is, is being thrown, and we really want to reduce this. this. We're going to be trying to, to have more live stream events to make sure that the message that you are discussing is moved forward even more. And we're going to be looking to integrate the field visits and the workshops as a new way of, of communicating and integrating uh, science and applications of the science. We will be working with having electronic posters, as we did last year, as a new way of communicating scientific messages. And we will keep on our commitment to bring the young professionals to the week by having dif different activities during a young professional day. And this is all what we have to say from Sigui, but I would like, before we, we go to any questions or comments that you might have, to give the floor as well to our key collaborating partners on what do they expect from the week, what are they willing to, what, yeah, what are they will, wishing to take from it. And I don't know whether, Diego, you want to, to start on that. Sure. Thanks, Adrian, and th thanks for the uh, invitation. Uh, to be in this session. I think, well, um, one important element of, of being collaborating partner, I think, is that uh, we are part of, of your, your scientific program committee, and that provides uh, a good um, vehicle to, in, through which we can try and, and, and influence and a bit uh, the content of the program. No? So it's a full week of <clears throat> different workshops, seminars, uh, side events, and in our particular case, uh, given that we are now launching uh, uh, next, next week the Thirsty Energy Initiative, we see it as a, a key uh, event in which we can al actually try and further expand our partnerships. And so we're building this new initiative. We're working in several countries around the world. This is a good opportunity to bring a lot of the key uh, collaborating, uh, our, uh, yeah, our collaborating partners, but also the key organizations that are always in, in Stockholm uh, to further strengthen these uh, partnerships and, and implementation on the ground. Um, another important element that I think is that we are, this, this year we are really making a concerted effort to, to bring to the table a lot of the key players in the energy sector. Uh, there's a, a lot of our groups, even in the bank on the energy side, that are very aware of this event this year. Uh, and we are contacting the, sort of the major players around the world, inviting them to events, to, to join event, uh, many of the workshops with us as co-conveners. So we've already had discussions with, you know, the, well, obviously BP is here, but uh, uh, Alstom and Avengoa and, and uh, Shell. And so we are trying to really bring uh, the, the key players and to the extent possible bring the energy specialists from those groups, not necessarily the water specialists from those groups. Um, so it's the opportunity that we have also in many of the workshops to bring the view of, from the energy sector. Uh, so we can also learn what we've been discussing here for the past two days, the complexities, understand much better the technological and regulatory and economic issues that they face and how we can help uh, strengthen their or, or present their business cases in a much uh, better way, including the the water resources considerations, no? the water considerations. And it's an opportunity on the other side, uh, I think, for, for them as well to try and understand much better you know, our language and, and what are, how do we see the, the water and energy interlinkages and how can we promote uh, uh, and strengthen new, promote new partnerships or strengthen some of the existing ones. So we, we see that uh, that is key. We are trying to bring as I said before, you know, very strong players from the energy community. Uh, it seems that everyone around the scientific committee is uh, with that same objective in mind. So there is a large network of, uh, of individuals in the water sector trying to reach out to the energy sector. This obviously for us is the annual event in water. Uh, and this year I think uh, things will be a bit different because we'll see a lot of uh, stakeholders from the energy sector. So that, for us, that is very valuable as we move forward in implementation of our initiative as well. 
Thank you, Diego. Mark, from IECM perspective, do you have anything to add? Sure, thank you, Adrian. Uh, you know, when we were invited by CWE uh, last year to become a key collaborating partner with, uh, for this year's Stockholm Water Week, um, we asked, well, why, did you, why, did you, why are you interested in IUCN? And they said, because we want to get non-water people at the, at the, at the Water Week. And, and I said, but we go there every year. Um, and then it, it turns out that IUCN as a conservation organization is not a water organization, which as the director of the water program in IUCN came as a <laughs> bit of a surprise to me. But it's, but it's true. It's absolutely true. And so what the reason we go to, to Stockholm every year is, is our interest is in getting, uh, getting nature and ecosystems issues into the discussions and into the dialogue. And we seek to do that in ways that position nature as part of the solution set. And, and Stockholm is a great place to have the debates uh, that can push the dialogue away from looking at, at ecosystems and environment as, as part of the constraints, a problem that has to be overcome, and to make it part of the solution set. So we, we are interested through the water and energy theme in, in pursuing how you can, how you can uh, work better with thinking about optimization <coughs> and putting uh, nature and natural infrastructure into optimization thinking. Uh, and alongside that goes, goes the governance and, and legal frameworks and institutions and partnerships uh, that are needed to, to work with optimization, to work across sectors, to, to work across issues and to do the negotiations that you need. Um, as a, as, a, as a global conservation organization that is made up of, of other member organizations, uh, we are uh, closely connected to work on the ground. And, and we um, try to bring to, to Stockholm every year, and this year would be no different, uh, uh, people who can talk about what these issues look like from, from, from the field, if you like, and are able to talk about the realities of implementation, the realities of changing practice. Uh, what we hope out of this year at Stockholm uh, is that we will, we will continue that process around this theme of energy and water, of, of better linking uh, the work in the field, the processes of implementation to policy dialogue. Uh, in, in, in our experience, there's a tendency in these kinds of rooms, in, in the kinds of meeting rooms that perhaps many of us often end up in, that we tend to have uh, too big a gap between what goes on in the field and what goes, what goes on in, 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 in policy dialogues. And, and we hope um, uh, working with Stockholm this year around this theme as a key collaborating partner, we can continue that process of narrowing that gap. Thank you, Mark. I'm Paul from Sustainable Energy for All. What do you looking for? Through uh, some of some few slides, just to see, just for you to see uh, the importance of uh, the link between water and energy for sustainable energy for all. A few people know quite a lot about uh, sustainable energy for all, but there are others within the group who've been asking me, "What is SE for all?" Well, it is the UN Secretary General's initiative on uh, sustainable energy for all, which in itself is a solution to a global, a major global problem. And the goal is to achieve sustainable energy for all within uh, the next uh, uh, 20 years or so. Uh, there are three targets, and these three targets have been translated into objectives. So there is an objective on, I mean, there is a target on access, there is an, a target on efficiency, and in sustainability. So maybe you wonder the coincidence with the theme of this meeting. Yeah, we are here partnering for access in, a, in an efficient and sustainable way. It's not a coincidence because uh, se all has been quite involved in the debate on, on the water energy nexus for a long time now. Um, se all is doing this uh, in a number of ways, targeting some of the things we have been discussing here. Uh, go, uh, development challenges, things around health, empowerment of women, employment opportunities. We think uh, through access to energy, uh, in a, uh, through uh, access in an efficient way, in using renewables, we are able to achieve some of these uh, development objectives. And we work with uh, governments, with business, 
with civil society uh, through a number of packages. So there is a package through the Global Action uh, Agenda for high impact opportunities, for uh, country action programs that uh, target specific countries, but also there is, uh, there are, there, there is uh, uh, monitoring and, 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 and progress tracking survey because it's important to, to measure these targets because the objectives are in themselves uh, targets. Now, um, quickly, our view of the Nexus. Most of what we have been discussing here is how SC4 sees the Nexus. But there is something I want to draw attention to. Uh, there's something I want to draw your attention to. The next one, please. Uh, we have not had... Next, next. Next, sorry. Next, yeah. We have not had much of the discussion on um, some other way we look at it because most of the time we see the Nexus as links and people ask, linear links, yes, they've been there and they are there, so what? But the nexus is not just about uh, links between water and energy. It goes far beyond that. So we, can, we see the nexus as, uh, uh, you know, in a dimensional way. So we, we see them as uh, uh, stakeholders working within their spheres of control, but also their spheres of control can influence uh, others' sphere of control. And also there is a sphere of uncertainty they don't know about. And when stakeholders accept this type of thinking that, their actions influence others, or their actions can also come back to influence them, then, it's, then they are working within the nexus. And I think this message is, is key. It goes beyond linear, uh, linear thinking. It go, it's, it's really like a dimension thinking or three-dimensional thinking. So uh, nexus is about exploring shared opportunities, uh, I mean shared uncertainties, searching for synergies, and gaining insights into the plans of others. So water sector gaining plants into the um, insights into the plants of the energy sector or the food sector and so on. Uh, but then we also accept that there are challenges. There are biophysical challenges because water and energy are not independent of the biogeochemical circle. They are properly in, uh, ingrained into it, but also there are social dimensions or socio-political dimensions. So we talked about uh, political uh, governance issues, policy, planning. So these are all within, embedded within the nexus. And this makes it a little bit complicated, but it creates opportunity to see it in, in, with, among several dimensions. So this is also how we, we see the nexus. So there are several dimensions, and these dimensions are also related to sustainable development uh, objectives. Now, what do we look for in, in what do we look for at the at, at the World Water Week? Uh, we want the nexus not to end this year. So we see the nexus perspective as it has received widespread attention and international support. So should should it stop there? No. We are thinking that it should be galvanized in a way that uh, it generates the interest it has already, and it should go beyond academic discussions and uh, towards tangible outcomes. So we are looking forward to uh, for focus to be put more on operationalizing the commitment we are hearing about and to build concrete uh, partnerships, strategic partnerships and alliances and commit resources, especially for capacity development, because this is where we see uh, in the coming years the challenges. So um, we, have, uh, partner, we are partnering with a few interested people or organizations in what we are calling Partnership for Nexus Advocacy and Capacity Development, and this is anchored within uh, IASA, within IASA, and IASA is a research institution. I'll be talking about this later in the afternoon, and I also work there as a research scholar, so I'm here with two hats, uh, one hat for IASA and another hat for Sustainable Energy for All. But we are we're looking forward for um, continued collaboration, not only this year, but also beyond, beyond this year, and I will talk a bit more later on about uh, IASA. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. And Josefina, I don't know whether we have maybe five minutes for, for questions, comments, if somebody has from, from the audience. If not, I think what I would encourage everybody to, to put the proposals together, the abstracts. As I said before, we really look for your content to, to put the week together. It's an event organized by CIWI, but it's in collaboration and in partnership with 
all the different organizations coming to the week. So with this, I think we just leave it here, and we, we hope to see you in Stockholm in September.